we got some snow last night. Uh, we just got into Colorado. So we look out over there, you see a little bit of snow on the peaks. Um, not much, but I want to show you what we're going to do. We're going to be here for an extended stay. So we are prepping for basically winter. And one thing that we noticed on our kitchen slide, and I'll, I'll pull back the sweep here. Yeah, get in there. You can see, you can see inside. You can see Adrian looking at me. So the only thing that's protecting this right here is just this little sweep. So I went out and I bought some hose in, or uh, pipe insulators and I'll show you what we're doing with those inside. Okay, so you can see the underside of the, there's a um, couple rollers there and some rollers over there. So there's a lot of rollers. So what I was trying to do is trying to figure out what would work um, to keep that air I mean, not a lot of cold air, but some cold air is coming in. So what we did is we ran down to uh, Home Depot. I imagine Lowe's or Ace Hardware would have this stuff as well. Um, and I'll have Beth hold it here. It is a half inch. Uh, you know, it has a low R value, only 3.3. But it's we're not really worried about the R as much as any type of draft that come in. So it's a half inch in diameter. And this is kind of what these guys look like. Uh, three foot sections, there's four per bag. And as you can see down here, what we're doing, and I'll have Beth just finish tucking this one in uh, with our dehumidifier. You know, we keep talking about that dehumidifier. So basically this guy will just roll in place and then you can tuck it in. And when you get by the rollers, it's a little tight, but you can actually roll the bottom and you can kind of just tuck it in. Now, like I said, we're gonna be here for an extended time. So when we move, obviously we'll pull these guys out, uh, but there's nothing to adhere to. And um, you can see we have a little bit of a joint there. We'll pull this guy down so that our, we butt the joint together and uh, it's that simple. So I'm going to put the other two in real quick and uh, show you how easy it is. So this is what the package looks like, um, or in there. So 10 bucks, can't go wrong. <laughs> so I'm just kind of holding the light up here so you can see. When we get to the last, we've got about 16 inches and then we got the corner. Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to start on this side and tuck that in and work over and then cut it with a utility knife when we get over here. And because of the trim piece, this one is a little more tricky. So what we will probably do is just wedge this guy under. Like so. All right, now cut a little long. So we're going to cut here.
you can use like the back of a butter knife if you want, if you can't get your fingers under there. Um, like I said, it is a little tight. Um, it's just a matter of manipulating things to make it work. Just Show trying, it who's boss. Trying to block the air. All we're doing. So, you have a bulb seal on the side here. So, there's a seal that goes all the way up that. So, you really don't need to worry about that. It's almost the same as this guy here versus the flap, which they call a blade seal, which I showed you earlier. Um, the bulb seal is compressed when the slide is always out. Um, so, there's not really any cold air that's coming here, but I can feel a little bit down here in the corner. So, we're going to work that guy up. And then we're gonna to move to the other slide and I'll show you what I'm gonna do for the carpet slide over here, okay? And we're back. So um, we got this guy all tucked in. You can almost see just a little bit up here. We have no vent come, or no draft coming through here. Now, I know some of you might not like that reveal and want to tuck it in a little cleaner. You can always cut the back end of um, the the foam insulator pipe whatever these things are called sorry i'm fumbling over my words here um the insulation you can always cut the back side of that and then um notch it basically for where the roller is for us we're perfectly fine with how that looks now the slide that we have up here this is our vanity slide that's up here um it's part of our bedroom bureau and then our sinks it has um, a bulb seal that goes all the way around it, uh, but there's still a little bit of air down here. So I'm going to try and show you what I'm going to, what we're going to do here. But first of all, we're going to use just a backing rod. Basically, this is what they use um, to fill a gap before they caulk it. Caulk it. Um, a lot of times in concrete and stuff like that, this is what they'll put in between the slabs of the concrete and then put the caulk in between it. So what we're gonna do, this one is for larger gaps. It's uh, 5 8 no, 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 by 20 feet. Basically, we're gonna go and we're gonna, I'll show you this little lip that's underneath here and we're gonna just tuck it in all the way down. And that will eliminate that draft. Not that there's any here, but um, at some times in this state it gets, you know, not very long, but it can get, you know, negatives. It can get all the way down to minus 20. Um, we've seen it before. This is where we're from. So um, we're just trying to take some preventable um, actions to make the unit more efficient. So hold tight and I'll show you what we're going to do here. All right. So we are under the rear side of this slide. It's on our curbside. And I'm going to take this backing rod and I'm just going to put it right in this little lip here. And very much like how we did the other insulation, I'm going to tuck this guy right here. And then we are just going to work this guy all the way down. And it is going to go right up against the bulb seal. So basically, what this guy is going to do, and I'm hoping that this flashlight isn't blinding everybody. Um, it's just not very well lit. So basically what I want is that this is in here. And um, it's just another layer of insulation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this guy all the way down. And then uh, we'll cut it and you'll see where we're at with the final product.
a couple different things last year. And this guy right here is a, uh, what is it? A Utilitech. We have had really good luck with that guy. We have two of them. We have this guy, and then we have, uh, gosh, sorry about that. That is kind of disgusting. Uh, we have this guy, and we have the one in the, the kitchen. Now, I want to make it very clear. We still use our propane heater, especially at night, because, oh, excuse me. Yeah, I have trust issues, and I don't want these things while we're sleeping to malfunction and melt. Catch on fire. Um, I know they're totally safe, but in the back of my head, I still have trust issues. <laughs> so at night, we don't run these things. But during the day, we do. Um, and perfect timing. The heat pump just kicked on. Um, but you still need to use your propane heater. Okay, so Beth turned off the uh, heat pump so that we could talk. Um, like I said, we use these guys during the day in association with the heat pump. Um, but at night, we use our furnace. And the reason that I don't use the furnace all the time is, well, furnaces are fantastic. They heat up really well, but they're not efficient. So you're going to burn through a lot of propane. Um, you have to see what works best for you. If propane works best for you right now, on an average, propane is about $4.50 a gallon. Um, so it's extremely expensive right now for propane to where electric is still relatively cheap. Um, and some of the places you don't have to pay for electric because we're having an extended stay, we are paying for electric. But we're paying like nine cents a kilowatt, which in the grand scheme of things is cheaper than paying for, you know, a, um, a barrel of, of propane, you know, every couple days. So... Again, the more you you do to insulate and make your unit a little more efficient, um, the better off it'll go. But getting back to the space heater, 65 bucks. We have one here. We have one in the other room. Um, we'll run that thing till we go to sleep. The reason that it's important to run your furnace is because all of your plumbing is down in your basement. Your furnace is designed to heat all that, to keep all of your um, pipes from freezing, from cracking. Um, on the expansion so always run your propane always we just don't run it that much we kind of use it all as a system together and it works out good so we've got the backing in we are all the way to the end basically i'm going to do the same thing i am going to come here and i am going to um stall for a minute all right so the backing rod is is real easy. I'm leaving a because again everybody's is different. Um, I left a little bit of a tab tucked behind. I have a utility um, uh, condor 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 right here conduit. Wow, uh, I have a conduit right here that has my electric, my water, and so I have the little tab right behind it. Uh, the reason I left the tab. On this one is so that I, when we go ahead and go to move and pull everything in, I can just pull that and pull it all the way out. So this guy was four bucks. Okay. We just insulated, what, 15 feet of slide. So four bucks is a good investment. Now, what we'll talk about on the next uh, video is we're going to talk about skirting and what type of skirting we use. And do you use the vinyl? Do you use the styrofoam? and why. So stay tuned for that. And if you guys got any questions, hit us up down in the comments. If not, have a great day. And guess what? We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.